Hello. I'm uh, Mustard Auto Line is a proud member, as you know, of Colto. It's good to be here. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the Orca Saver and what's been done so far and Mustad Auto Line's relationship uh, with our partner, SaveWave, in the Netherlands. SaveWave is a Dutch-based company that uh, are specialized in develop developing solutions for the challenges the fishing industry and marine wildlife are facing. While uh, Mustad Auto Line, as most of you know, we develop and supply technology to the world's uh, longline fleet. We use 10% uh, approximately every year of our annual turnover, and it goes directly and right back into R&D. And uh, the Orca Saver has been a huge part of uh, this R&D the last 10 years. We partnered up with SaveWave 10 years ago, and um, we have been through ups and downs, but it's definitely been a learning process for both companies. Uh, in 2004, we signed an agreement, a letter of intention, or SaveWave did with us, actually. Um, then in 2005, we started the development of uh, the Orca Saver, and this was based upon the Dolphin Saver, which some of you might be familiar with. The Dolphin Saver was a device meant for fishing nets that had two transducers, and it worked only on internal batteries. So our concept was, let's take uh, the Dolphin Saver and uh, combine eight of them have now 16 transducers and see if this works on the orcas as well, since we knew at that point that it had a pretty good effect on all the dolphins. In 2006, 2007, uh, we started a production of these and the first results were positive, but we experienced technical challenges with uh, some of the system. Uh, this first model produced uh, between 15 and 60 kilohertz uh, at approximately 150 decibels. Uh, the results uh, were promising, but we determined very fast that more power was needed at this point. In 2008, our engineers focused on new transducers and more power um, and batteries at this point were no longer an option. We knew that higher decibel levels were needed. In 2009, two products were launched and tested and uh, both products functioned as planned and captains were really enthusiastic. Uh, the conclusion was the pain peak signals produced the best results, but technical improvements still need, were still needed. In 2010, a series of 11 products with decibel levels uh, at between 195 and 197 were launched at kilohertz between 6 and 7. Um, and we had a fixed kilohertz also option at 20 at this time. Uh, again, our conclusion was uh, that we needed to upgrade some technical uh, issues. Uh, technical failures did happen, but we at least learned that the 6 to 7 kilohertz worked best at this time and the variation between them and not a fixed kilohertz. In 2011 and 2012, uh, we had mixed results due to, again, technical, this time it was electrical issues. Um, and at this point we were uncertain if the unit was uh, working or not, or had any effect at all due to this electrical issue. 2013, sensitive electronics were enclosed using the Faraday cage, isolating the electronics inside. Um, and now, uh, or the previous mo models were filled with epoxy um, and we now uh, saw new possibilities. So 
finally, uh, the biological results were starting to appear and uh, the technicality was working as it should. In 2014 and 15, we expanded the kilohertz after this testing from uh, in, or the results in 2013. And um, we had short pulses now with high decibel levels. Our conclusion, uh, I just wanted to take you guys through what we've been through, uh, but our conclusion was pretty, or today is pretty simple, that uh, using digital signals on this frequency range, uh, nothing could be, couldn't uh, Im improve the, uh, what do you say, efficacy? Excuse my English, is that right? Efficacy, yeah. Um, so we, knew that the only way to move forward was that we needed a broader frequency range. We needed analog signals instead of digital with high output and unlimited signal mixing possibilities. Just to give you an idea of what we've been through, uh, this was the first product back in 2006. We upgraded it 2007. We came with our 2009 version that had high decibel transducers, eight of them. Then we uh, rendered it with a vein before we came to the latest mo model having 24 transducers covering a larger area. During this product development, we've been working very close with a lot of uh, marine bi biologists and we've also done uh, significant, significant uh, testing and acoustic, um, at an acoustic military base in the Netherlands. So what happened in regards to customer feedback and what we look at as habit habituation? <laughs> The first feedback we received after launching this new um, Orca Saver was, and I'm talking mostly for Alaska now since I'm stationed in Seattle, and um, was perfect. All reports we received was uh, that Mustad and SaveWave have finally figured out and solved this challenge. And vessel owners were lining up to purchase this product, we, we couldn't keep up with the demand at this point. We were only able to produce, I think, 11 or 13 of them a year. After about eight to 10 months of usage, we received the first really negative feedback. And at this point, we thought, due to some deployment uh, challenges mentioned from uh, Eduardo, that this was technical difficulties, that uh, the transducers had been hit against the side of the vessels. So we took the unit back, uh, we tested it, and uh, we noticed that there were no technical errors. Then we thought, okay, maybe it was the type of whale. Maybe it was a territorial, migrational, but we did not know. After receiving more similar feedback, more and more actually, we, uh, yeah, the habituation started uh, <laughs> coming to our thoughts, um, and this is what we believe today happened in this case. And today, but I, I must underline that today there are still a few vessels in Alaska using our device, and they're not saying it works as it did when, the, when we launched it, but they're saying it's better to have it on board than to not have it because it still works from time to time. SaveWave and Mustad, after receiving all this feedback, after being through the last 10 years plus of uh, the development project, we started working right away on developing a new Orca Saver and an additional product that we're calling the sound beam. I am going to talk more about these new products tomorrow. Uh, this was just a brief update for all of you on what we've done so far. Thank you.